What's going on, people? Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learn. And we won! I know, don't restart the video, don't check the date on it. This isn't 2021 or anything like that. We won. We won a rare game of football. Three points are on the board for the first time since the day after Boxing Day. It's been a long time. It has been a really long time. But yeah, hopefully we're going to have an optimistic show today. We're going to delve into all the major talking points of the Chelsea win against Crystal Palace. Biggest derby of the weekend, as you guys already know. So before we start, hit the like button, subscribe. Check out my personal channel in the description below. We're on the way to 30k subs and we are just under 300 subs away. So every single subscriber counts. Get involved. Hit the subscribe button. Check out the content. And yeah, we're going to get in to Chelsea 1, Crystal Palace 0. Now, in terms of performance, it was good in some phases, a bit poor in some other phases. We did start the game slowly, but we continued to grow in confidence. We, we dominated the game more, the more the game progressed. And everybody did their job in getting us the victory to, um, yesterday. Well, I say everybody, most. But we will delve into that in this video. Um, didn't start well. I thought we looked a little bit sloppy, a little bit passive. Um, we were kind of a bit wasteful with some of our chances too. The ball was going everywhere except in the back of the net, which is very, very Chelsea, if you guys have been watching us long enough to know. But it was about persistence. This game was about persistence. It was about keeping your head up. And that's exactly what we did. We actually looked like a side that wanted the three points for the first time in ages. Usually, we only turn up for about... 30 minutes and that's it i thought we were a lot better today we kept the same tempo going for the majority of the match i thought Jorginho was strong defensively i thought the likes of badia shield and silva looked like a very good partnership next to each other there was a lot of positives to take from today's game a lot of positives i want to start off with badia shield because there was a lot of question marks about him when he first joined us is he good enough for the top level right now how many mistakes does he have in his game? There was big questions about him having a little bit of a bozo gene in him. And he did look a bit sloppy at the start. I thought he was trying to drive with the ball a, bit, a little bit too much and it just wasn't working out for him. But he simplified his game after that and everything just fell into place. I thought the passing out the back was very good. Nothing flashy, no 60-yard pingers over the top or anything like that. But it was just stable passing into the midfield, into the right channels that allowed us to be able to continue our play and build it up from the first phase, which is very important to starting attacks from the back. I thought his size, by the way, he is an absolute tank. And we struggle aerially. That right there is someone who is going to help us a lot in terms of defending offensive set pieces, attacking set pieces, corners, all sorts of stuff. He is a physical specimen. And if there's one weakness to Thiago Silva's game, and he is a perfect defender, but if there is one chink in his armour, it's aerial threat. I think that might be his only weakness. Badia Shiel right there takes it all away because he can hold all the weight of the aerial, of the aerial threats by himself. Brilliant performance from him. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we got VVD light or anything like that. Keep up the performances. Keep up the good work. But as it stands right now, what a debut. Couldn't have asked for much more for Badia Shield. Brilliant performance from him. Um, the second point I want to get into is Kepa. Because Kepa had a sloppy few games. There was a big mistake for the Fulham goal, for the second Fulham goal. There was a big mistake for the Manchester City goal in our last two league games. And I was starting to ask questions. Is the old Kepa starting to come back? And I was hoping and praying it wasn't the case. That game showed me a lot. Not just from what Kepa can give you. Because when he's confident, he is a very good shot stopper. We saw that all the way back to 18, 19 days. I mean more being able to bounce back from bad performances. Do you crawl into your shell after a string of bad performances? Is it just downhill from there? Or can you pick yourself up and get yourself right back to the level that you were originally at? And Kepa did that. He did that and so much more. I was very, very happy with his performance. If it wasn't how good Thiago Silva was, Kepa would be my man of the match. And it's a fair argument to make as well because he physically saved us the three points with three amazing saves. I think it was two in the first half, including an amazing near post stop from a header just before um, the stroke of half time. Then the shot from the Decore volley in the second half. 
absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how he got a hand to that. But that is what I want to see from Kepa. Even when you make mistakes, can you br bring yourself back up to the level that you were at before? And he's showing that. And that's the markings of a good first team goalkeeper. Now, do we keep Kepa or do we look for better? If better is on the market and we can get them, go for it. Kepa has shown that he's happy to be a number two and wait for his opportunity as well. But for this season, if we don't get a goalkeeper, in spite of the F of the small errors that I've seen in the last two games, I would still back Kepa. I would still have enough faith in him to see him through the season. Even if it's not at 100%, I think he's performed well enough and consistent enough that he deserves to be in the running as a number one goalkeeper. Even if we end up looking for better, it raises Kepa's transfer value. It means there's other clubs that will go in for him. This time last year, we were trying to sell him off to anyone who would look at him. And it, no one came in. Only Napoli came in for a loan deal. And I think they end up going for Kilo Navas instead. So this is better for him. This is better for his valuation. This is better for the club as well. Kepa, keep it up. Brilliant. Third point I want to go into. The game management. I thought we actually handled being in the lead in the right way. It took us a while to get the lead. But once we did... We completely threw attacking out of the window. And I'm glad to see Graham Potter do that. I've said the one thing I've wanted to see from Potter, if he has no faith in this side, play the most horrific brand of defensive football ever. Just sit everyone behind the ball. Because I'd rather have draws than L's. And we did that as soon as we got the lead. And it helped us maintain the lead too. Because Crystal Palace put some crazy ass pressure on us. Especially in the last 10-15 minutes. And I thought the substitutions were right. It brought more fresh defenders on. The likes of Kula Bali, Azpilicueta. Azpi I can trust for 15 minutes. I'm fine with that. It's anything more than that when I'm starting to get a little bit worried. But yeah, it was the right decisions from him. Brilliant move. And good to see us get the three points as a result. Credit goes to Graham Potter for that. My fourth point. Kai Havertz. Back the goal. I'm, I'm glad he got something in the back of the net. Was it a good performance though? I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm really, really not too sure. Because for me, I still needed to see a lot more. I thought his touch was atrocious. I thought he should have had way more than just a one goal. Ziyech was putting balls to him on a plate, including the assist. And by the way, brilliant performance by Ziyech before the Ziyech stands come out the woodwork. So you didn't mention him in your five things. You got a Ziyech agenda. No, Ziyech was brilliant. There you go. We can move on. Havertz, like... Good goal. We know he's he is has some sort of clinical ability from his head. But there was the header in the first half. There was the two-yard chance that even just any touch and it goes in. And if Palace equalise, I'm on this I'm on this video saying Havertz should have done way more. Because those chances were easier than the header you scored. So it was good to see him stay persistent. I do like that from him. He kept his head up, he kept waiting for other opportunities. But he needs that ruthlessness in his game, man. He really does. If we're going to start even talking about him being a long-term asset to this club, he needs to be more ruthless. And he's just not showing it. But fair play to Kai for the goal. Final point. Liverpool. There is no reason why we cannot go to Liverpool and win. Except ourselves. We are the only, pe we are the only team that could stop ourselves from going to Liverpool and getting a result. We are our own worst enemies too many times in the occasion. Liverpool are terrible. They are crap. They are all the issues that we have, Liverpool has. So if we go in there and we're serious, we should be going there and getting three points. This would be a very good confidence building result for the likes of Potter, for the likes of players. But we need to turn up. We seriously need to turn up for this one. So we'll see what happens. And yeah, big up everyone that's locked in. Like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, up the chels.